Hello, this is Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Medical Training. Today I'm going to discuss uh, the FDA 351 versus 361 regulations. Uh, I'll give a basic overview and hopefully I can clear up some of the confusion that's rampant you know, throughout uh, the country on which would fall into each um, and the categories. So who is R3? I created the R3 family of companies about a decade ago, uh, you know, one of which is R3 Medical Training. Um, we've won a lot of awards over the last few years. We are a leader um, in the regenerative space. So I'm going to go over the, the FDA's purview. What are the categories of regulation that they uh, oversee? Uh, 351 versus 361, and then part and parcel of those, which is minimal manipulation versus maximal manipulation, and homologous versus non-homologous use. All right, I'm not an attorney. Um, nothing in this presentation should be construed as legal advice, okay? All right, what does the FDA actually do? Well, they're responsible for protecting the public in the United States by ensuring the safety, efficacy, and security of both human and veterinary drugs, along with biological and tissue products and medical devices. They also ensure the safety of our nation's food supply, cosmetics, and products that emit radiation. I like to look at it as the FDA three-lane highway because the predominant three lanes consist of medical devices, drugs, uh, and biologics, and then the HCTPs, human cell and tissue products. Um, and we'll just briefly go through those. Medical devices are class one, two, or three. Um, and basically uh, by level of safety, if there's more safety concerns, the level class is higher. Class one is very basic, Band-Aids, a walker, a goniometer, you know, very low safety concern. Those manufacturers need to be registered, but the devices themselves don't need to be cleared or approved by the FDA. Class two goes up a level to blood pressure cuffs, contact lenses, surgical gloves. Um, some of those do need an FDA clearance or approval. Others, no. Um, so, you know, usually, like, if I have a question, I'll just call my regulatory attorney, and they'll tell me whether or not we need to get clearance or not, um, or approval. Class three is the highest safety concern. It could be a pacemaker or a stent. Those uh, devices are going to need a pre-market approval, which is basically a, a, you know, device approval uh, from the FDA to make sure that the, they're safe. All right, moving into the uh, biologics and tissues, um, this is the document the FDA put out as a handbook back in 2020, Regulatory Considerations for Human Cells, Tissue, and Cellular and Tissue-Based Products. That's the long for HCTP. Minimal Manipulation and Homologous Use. So guidance for industry and their own uh, staff. So the 351 versus 361, the FDA generally regulates uh, regenerative medicine technologies through sections 351 and 361 of the Public Health Service Act. 351 products are regulated as drugs and or biologics. They go through basically the same clinical trial approval pathway, whereas 361s are largely unregulated as HCTPs. Once again, that's human cellular and tissue-based products. So let's talk about 351s for a sec. Uh, 351s are blood-derived cell or tissue-based products that fall under the three, 351 category because they are more than minimal manipulation or they're used for non-homologous work. All right, those are the two keys. Minimal versus maximal manipulation or non-homologous versus homologous use. I'm going to define each of these terms. So if it's a 351, then it will have to go through an approval process. Um, that can take anywhere from 3 to 12 years. The median cost of the approval is going to be about $19 million. Could be up to a billion. For example, trials, trials for drug or biologic approvals with fewer than 100 patients um, had on average cost of just $6 million, while the trials with more than 1,000 patients had an average of $77 million. 
20% of these drugs or biologics make it through once the clinical trial starts. So one out of five, and why do they fail? Uh, a company runs out of money, the effectiveness isn't shown, or there are safety concerns. Now, <clears throat> technically, let's go through these terms. So people throw them around interchangeably, biologics versus tissue, uh, but technically a biologic refers to a 351, and the word tissue or allograft can refer to a 361, okay? So, you know, people who use the term like, oh, warranty versus guarantee, oh, they're the same. Well, they're really not. There's some nuances, and that's similar to what we're dealing with here. So if you want to be technically correct, for a 351, use the term biologic. For a 361, use the term tissue, okay? Now, in reality, a biological product can be a wide range, such as vaccines, blood and blood components, allergenics, somatic cells, gene therapy, tissues, and so on. Now, this is directly from the regulatory uh, handbook from the FDA to define a 361, okay? Now, the HCTP needs to be minimally manipulated. It needs to be intended for homologous use. And the manufacturing does not involve combining it with another article, except for water, crystalloids, or a sterilizing, preserving, or storage agent, okay? What does that mean? It means you can cryogenically preserve an HCTP, and it doesn't automatically make it a 351. For instance, a 361 can be cryogenically stored with uh, DMSO, and that's okay. Now, the HCTP does not have a systemic effect and is not dependent upon the metabolic activity of living cells for its primary function. Or it does have a systemic effect and or is dependent upon the metabolic activity of living cells for its primary function and is for autologous use, is for allogeneic use in a close relative, or is for reproductive use. So let me go back to that for one second. You can have living cells in an HCTP. People who say, oh, it has live cells, you know, therefore it's a drug. That's actually not true if that's not the primary function, okay? Keep that in mind. All right, so here's uh, some more about a 361 with minimal manipulation. For structural tissue, the definition is processing that does not alter the original relevant characteristics of the tissue's utility for reconstruction, repair, or replacement. And then for cells or non-structural tissue, processing that does not alter the original, the relevant biological characteristics, okay? So an example of a structural tissue, this is right off the FDA's regulations, bone, skin, amniotic membrane uh, or umbilical cord, blood vessel itself, adipose tissue, articular cartilage, tendon, ligament. So here's the overview of 351 versus 361. Uh, technically, you should use the word biologic for a 351 and HCTP or, you know, tissue for a 361. You do need approval um, for marketing uh, a specific claim, a therapeutic use. Like, oh, I'm going to use this specifically for, you know, MS, ALS, something like that. You would need FDA approval for that. You also have to show the potency and purity through that approval process. The barrier to entry is therefore very high for a 351 because of the time and cost, you know, and work involved. It's low for a 361. And for marketing exclusivity, you get 12 years for a 351, nothing for a 361. I do want to mention PRP. Um, a lot of people try and confuse um, people in the industry by saying, oh, well, you know, you can't do PRP anymore because of these 351 regulations. That's not true. It's not even regulated as a 351 or a 361. It's not an HCTP. Um, it's a blood product. So we're not talking about PRP at all. So let's look at the umbilical cord itself. You know, when you look at an umbilical cord in cross-section, there's the uh, matrix tissue, and then there's also the three blood vessels, the two arteries and a vein. So you have to look at them uh, separately uh, because the umbilical cord tissue um, 
provide structural support, cushioning, lubrication, and protection, and therefore um, can be minimal manipulation uh, depending on the way it's processed. And the product that we work with at our training is Rebella WJ, uh, which is a matrix uh, tissue product that is not manipulated at all. Now, in the 351 category, it's processing that alters the original relevant characteristics for support, protection, cushioning, and lubrication. If it does that, it's maximal manipulation, which is not allowed unless it's uh, approved. These are processes that may alter it, uh, such as culturing the cells, uh, grinding may, may turn it into uh, maximal, or enzymatic digestion um, is considered an alteration as well. Now, once again, cryogenic freezing of uh, tissue does not alter the characteristics. It does not turn a product into a maximal manipulation. So here's some examples. A manufacturer grinds bone to form bone chips and particles. Um, this would generally be considered minimal manipulation because the processing does not alter the original relevant characteristics for its utility to support. A manufacturer, let's look at another one. A manufacturer grinds and lyophilizes amniotic membrane. That is maximal manipulation because the processing alters the orig original relevant characteristics of that membrane to serve as a barrier. Okay. Another example, a manufacturer removes blood vessels from the umbilical cord. Um, the rest of the cord, the, the matrix, is processed according to current good manufacturing practices. Um, you know, there is some grinding and cutting, but the processing does not alter the original relevant characteristics to serve as a cushion. So this is still minimal manipulation. So when you look at homologous versus non-homologous use, that's the second criteria for an HCTP. We talked about minimal versus maximal manipulation, which involves the manufacturing at the lab. Now, homologous use involves the intended use. It means the repair, reconstruction, replacement, or supplementation of a recipient cells or tissues with an HCTP that performs the same basic function or functions in the recipient as in the donor. So it's same, same, okay? The function it had in the donor is going to be the same function it has in the recipient. It doesn't have to be in the same anatomical area, but it has to be the same function. So we generally consider an HCTP to be for homologous use when it's used to repair, reconstruct, replace, or supplement recipient cells or tissues that are identical to the donor cells and perform one or more of the same basic function. So this could be using skin to replace skin or recipient cells or tissues that may not be identical to the donor cells or tissues that perform one or more of the same basic functions. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples. An amniotic membrane product is applied to the surface of the eye to cover or offer protection. Now, this is homologous use because serving as a covering and offering protection as a barrier are basic functions of amniotic membrane. Now, you're not using them in the same anatomical area, you're using them in the eye, but that's okay because it's the same basic function. And people do that all the time, you know, during an ocular surgery. Example number two, an umbilical cord matrix allograft is used in a joint to provide cushioning and support. This is still homologous use. It's the same function in the recipient as it is in the donor. All right, let's look at some non-homologous uses. An HCTP from adipose tissue is used to treat a neurologic disorder such as MS by limiting the autoimmune reaction. Now, this is not homologous use because limiting the autoimmune reaction is not a basic function of adipose tissue, okay? Now, a hematopoietic progenitor cell from cord blood um, is used for IV use to treat cerebral palsy through the repair of damaged tissue um, in the brain. That is not homologous use because that's not what cord blood um, is intended for as its basic uh, function. Once again, here's the uh, um, down and dirty list of the separation, 351 versus 361. Once again, the term biologic, 351. HCTP, 361. FDA approval is required for marketing a 351. Um, 
You cannot have a labeling claim for a 361 because it hasn't gone through the clinical trial. Okay. The potency is assured along with purity for a 351 because that's part and parcel of the approval process. Um, and for marketing exclusivity, there is none for HCTP, but you do get 12 years after an approval. All right, so let's talk about some acceptable homologous uses in regenerative medicine. Injections can qualify for homologous use. How? Well, first of all, you need to use a minimal manipulation product. That's the first um, criteria for being a 361. Homologous use is the second. Rubella WJ, as mentioned, that's the product we use at our, our trainings, um, and that does not get cultured. It doesn't have um, any enzymes. There's, the blood is removed, and it's basically just for the structural support, cushioning, and protection. Can a 361 product have live cells in it? The answer is yes. It's okay if those cells even serve a metabolic function locally as a secondary effect. Remember, the HCPTP cannot have a systemic effect, and it's not dependent upon the metabolic activity of living cells for its primary function. If the primary function is structural support, protection, and cushioning, the secondary function can be a local metabolic effect. Most people, especially competitors, either don't understand it or just want to confuse people by saying any living cells is a violation of being a 361. But this is directly out of the FDA regulatory handbook. What types of, uh, of areas or issues can receive injections? Well, joints and soft tissues can receive um, an injection of a minimal manipulation product to provide structural support for a joint or in soft tissue for nerves, vessels, follicles uh, to provide support, protection, and cushioning as well. Okay. Now, once again, um, the FDA does not regulate the practice of medicine, so what a provider and a patient decide on the usage you know, is between them, and that has nothing to do with this regulations. All right, systemic treatment would be something like an IV or a nebulizer or intranasal. You are relying, uh, usually, on a systemic effect for the primary function. So these are not considered homologous use, okay? All right, there you have it. Um, I hope I didn't uh, do it in a confusing way, but I tried to take the actual FDA regulatory handbook verbiage and put that into language that most people can understand. Now, once again, the product that we use at our trainings is Rubella WJ. It's an umbilical cord allograft tissue, which is not manipulated at all, and it's intended for homologous use as a 361 compliant product. If you'd like to learn more about it, please call 888 568-6909 and there's more information on regensuppliers.com which is the um, exclusive distributor uh, of that product. Now r3medicaltraining.com uh, we've been offering hands-on courses for years. This uh, includes a stem cell training course, a regenerative aesthetics course, an ultrasound guided injection training course which fills up every time, as well as a PDO thread lifting course, basic and advanced, um, and this functional medicine certification course, um, which providers rave about, and it's three days to obtain uh, the certification. So please visit us at r3medicaltraining.com. You can see what the latest courses are, the dates, and locations. Feel free to call us if you have questions about any of the upcoming courses at 888 998 63 Four three.